again to uh, welcome to um, this week's news brief. First, we want to take a look at um, the 30 year mortgage. As you can see, it went up to 3.49. <clears throat> already, already middle of uh, 3%. Because if we take a look at 10-year treasury yield, 1.746 went up. Uh, <clears throat> the last two weeks, we, we didn't have the first week's meeting. So last two weeks, it went up uh, 0.3 almost. And um, <clears throat> so that's why the interest rate going up. Uh, we're going to see um, what's happening uh, a little bit later. And 15 year also went up, FHA also went up. So the, uh, all this um, upward movement, interest rates, 지금 올라갔죠? 지금 3.49시기나 올라갔고요, 30년이. 15년 2.65, FHA 3.25. 왜냐하면 10 year treasury yield가 1.746%로 올라갔다. 따라서 지금 30년, 고정이 이자가 올라가고 있고 지금 한 가지 트렌드는 여기 보시면은 그 어, 컨벤셔널 론의 그 컨포밍 리밋이라는 게 있는데요. 컨포밍 어, 그 리밋이 상당히 많이 올라갔어요. 그래서 싱글하우스 하이 밸런스 컨포밍 론은 거의 1 밀리언까지 이렇게 지금 올라가죠. 어, 이 프로그램에 해당이 되는 분들은 이제 이자율이 상당히 좋은, 좋고, 어, 그 다음에 이제 에, 이 모기지 하시는 분들도 어, 세컨 마켓에 잘팔 수가 있는 그런 한계를 우리가 컴퓨터 공이라고 하는데, 오케이. 오케이. Let's take a look at uh, the news. The first news is a local news. Palisade Park, New Jersey plans out redevelopment project on Broad Avenue. There are a lot of talking and um, discussions, rumors around, but uh, this time finally Mayor Chong announced the plans for redevelopment project on Broad Avenue at the New Year address, which is the first time that plan announced publicly. And he said there is no detailed proposal, but uh, probably in order to do that, um, the town has to uh, <clears throat> revise the current height limit. Current height limit is a two story, but uh, they have to um, lift that uh, current limit. So <clears throat> that's what they're talking about. So anyway, this is the first time that they're talking about uh, officially, uh, Broad Avenue redevelopment. I think personally, uh, Palisade Park, we need more parking garage. See, if they um, remove this uh, height limit to two story, okay, and then, then probably they can build a public uh, parking garage like Oli, okay. Uh, Foley uh, the, uh, the beautiful, beautiful project. Uh, it's a beautiful garage. And uh, also first floor, it has a post office. They didn't move yet, uh, but that was a beautiful project. By the way, the, the garage project is done by Tim Hase. It's a Korean fellow, uh, Mr. Ha. Uh, he is uh, one of um, uh, the mainstream uh, architect in US. At one time, he was um, the uh, architectural council member uh, for the uh, Obama uh, Avenue. But anyway, so we need a public garage in Palisade Park. Definitely, if there is a plan, I uh, go for it. Okay, the Park Park, Jong Shijang, Nimi, Broad Avenue, Read the Jagger Park, publicly mention한 거는 처음인데 하겠다. 아, 아직 뭐 디테일은 아무것도 없고 어, 단지 이제 그걸 하기 위해서는 아마 지금 현재 고도 제한돼 있는 2층까지의 고도 제한 그 룰을 풀어서 
더 이제 올릴 수 있도록 그걸 먼저 해야 될 것이다. 이런 얘기들을 지금 언언 했다고 뉴스가 들어와 있습니다. Okay, next news is Manhattan luxury condo sales is soaring. Hmm, that's kind of good news. Um, Wall Street Journal reported on 4th that more than 1,900 sales over uh, oh, sales of over 4 million uh, priced condos have been made in 2021 in Manhattan. That's good news. And the total transaction amount reached to 16 billion, which was record since 2006 when they started collecting the relevant data. So, <clears throat> well, this is a uh, high-end uh, condos of over $4 million, uh, okay? That was really booming. So why is that? Well, as foreigners are difficult to enter into the market because of pandemic, so domestic buyers, sort, sort of New Yorkers, uh, were more active to purchase luxury condos with low interest rate, they're enjoying a low interest rate and extra fund out of booming stock market investment. They have a lot of money. And also they need more space for working from home and the children staying more at home. So that's why they need a bigger space. Uh, the statistic says uh, that these uh, homes, uh, they usually need uh, at least 5% uh, more space than uh, before. 그 메나탄의 이제 럭셔리 칸도가 결과적으로 이제 통계를 보니까 2021년도에 어, 4 million 이상 되는 칸도들이 1,900개가 팔렸다. 어, 그래서 그게 2006년 이후 데이터를 그때부터 기피했었는데 기록을 깼다. 어, 그왜 그러냐 하면 이제 외국 사람들이 외국 마켓에 이제 늘 들어오게 될 수밖에 없었고 팬데믹 때문에. 어, 그러다 보니까 이제 뉴욕커들이 많이 비싼 칸도를 샀다. 왜냐하면 이자율도 낮고 그 다음에 이제 스탁 쪽이 부밍이 되는 바람에 이제 돈들을 많이 벌었다. 아, 그리고 또 집에서 일을 많이 하고 그 다음에 아이들이 집에 많이 스테잉하기 때문에 좀큰 스페이스가 필요하게 됐다. 그래서 하여튼 칸도의 럭셔리 하우스는 부밍이었다. 아, 그런 보도가 지금 들어와 있고요. The next news is a rise in yield clips S&P and blue chips. Well, this is what we're talking about. Um, <clears throat> the 10-year treasury yield, 1.746. And um, well, 10-year uh, year, the 10-year treasury bond is used as a, a proxy for mortgage rate, 10-year yield, I should say. Um, <clears throat> so 10-year ten ten uh, treasury yield is used as a proxy for mortgage rate, which means it goes together, linked. It's also as a sign of investor sentiment about the economy. Hmm. That's why we uh, usually look at the, um, every week we look at the 10-year treasury uh, bond yield because it's a sign of investor sentiment about the economy. A rising yield, a rising yield indicates a falling demand for treasury bond. It goes the other way around, which means investors prefer high risk, higher reward investment. Uh, the rising yield means investor looking into other places, more high risk and higher reward. Uh, area. So uh, this this week, what happened is choppy trading came as the yield on 10-year treasury notes rose to 1.799 percent. It's the highest uh, settlement level since January 2020, according to this company, from 1.769 percent on Friday. Okay, and bond yields move in the opposite direction from prices. Bond prices and bond yield. Uh, the opposite move, that means price went down. That's why bond yield went up. And the surging yield since the start of 2022, well, this is the beginning of the week of year 2022, and then yield is surging right now. Okay, this has sent a shudder through the tech stocks. Tech stocks are kind of trembling, okay, shaky a little bit. I mean, up and down. 
by selling bonds and sending yields higher, the investors are indicating that, okay, this is important, the investors' sentiment, okay, invest indicating that they believe the Fed could raise a short-term interest rate in March and begin to shrink its holding of bonds and other assets soon after. So it, it basically conforms what we're looking into. The low uh, interest rate, Low interest rate helps to fuel a huge rally in high tech, uh, uh, in tech stocks last year. As you can see, the, um, the tech stocks, it's unbelievable, right? I mean, unbelievable so that uh, kind of a lot of people are kind of worried. When is it going to be crushed? Okay, when, when they tank, then it becomes a... a I mean, everybody knows what kind of problem we will have. Making bonds less attractive and supporting investors to buy risk assets. But as the Fed has people to, to, to fighting inflation, tech stocks has lost some of their luster, okay? Uh, the prospect of higher rates also reduced the value of investors to see in the future cash flows of fast growing tech companies. <clears throat> Um, why this thing gives me overlapping, I don't know. But anyway, take a look at this. Um, this a 10 year treasury yield is a, in the beginning, January 3, January 5th, January 7th. And today is uh, what, 12th. And from the beginning of the year, it went up, priming up up to right now 1.779. So because of this, uh, the uh, tech um, Dow Jones, they started here, this is January 3rd here, and the 4th, 5th, it went down and up and down and up. So it's a down and um, I think today a little bit uh, at the 10th, uh, a little bit up. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> they want to see the relationship between the 10-year treasury yield and the stock market. Well, they want to see this investor's sentiment, what investors think if we move, if we see this kind of a move. Uh, 10-year treasury yield가 지금 uh, 올라갔고요. Yield가 올라갔다는 거죠. Yield가 올라갔다는 거는 이 일드, 이 텐이어 일드는 뭘 보여주냐면 인베스터들의 그 생각, 그, 그 마음, 오케이 어떤 생각을 하느냐 이런 걸 센티멘 이런 걸 보여주는데 음, 지금 그래서 그게 지금 올라갔고요. 10.99, 1.799 올라가서 그 올라간 바람에 이제 스탁도 이제 조금 프락츄에이트했다. 여기 이제 보는 것처럼 다우존스 그래프, S&P 500, and 나스다. 어, <웃음> 어, 이렇게 지금 좀 어, 이제 이게 좀 흔들림이 있는 거죠, 샤더. 어. 어, 그래서 계속해서 여러분들이 10-year treasury yield를 이건 뭐 구글에 그냥 치면 전화기에서 치면 10-year treasury yield 하면 탁 튀어나오니까 아 오늘은 얼마지? 그걸 보면 이제 어, 물론 당연히 이자율을 예상할 수가 있을 거고요. 30년 이자율이 올라간다 라는 걸할수 있고 이게 떨어지면 이제 내려간다 라는 걸 예상할 수 있으니까 어, 뭐 관심 가지고 계속 보시면 음, 그리고 이제 수요일마다 어, 제가 이제 리포트 해드린 걸쭉 보시면 아마 좀 이렇게 에, 에, 팔로우 할 수가 있을 거예요. 오케이, okay. next news is a surging home price is a somewhat sentimental issue. Hmm. This is also interesting. Why the price is going so high? Of course, we're saying uh, low interest rate and not enough uh, inventory. But Yale professor Robert Schuller, who is a co-inventor of CoreLogic Case Schiller Index, everybody is familiar with that especially uh, the case Schiller index for 20 cities, 20 major cities in the US, the, the index price going up, going down, etc. And the Robert Schuller is a very famous guy, still he's uh, alive and kicking, a Yale professor at the um, AEA meeting, 
I think this is kind of an annual um, economy uh, association or something, annual meeting on 7th, that surging home prices cannot be reasoned only low interest rate, but somewhat could be resulted from sentiment of home buyers. Uh, that means it's a psychology, uh, you know, it's a people's mind, people's think, and not really, uh, not only uh, because of the low interest rate, that's what they're saying, such as peer pressure. Uh, so, oh, you have to buy a house, you have to buy a house, right now you have to buy a house, etc. They They talk and then they spread like a virus. And the collective confidence. He also mentioned that they are very difficult to do quantitative research about these kind of things, okay? The buyer's sentiment is very difficult to do research. He's an economist, he's a researcher, but he wants to recognize the exist existence of those factors. He wrote a book, a Narrative Economics. By the way, um, I picked up this book and about, um, I read through about one third, a very interesting uh, theory, sort of economic theory, but it's a narrative. Narrative means a story, it's telling people, it's a rumor. Uh, you talk to your friends and your friends talk to the other people and then it spread, okay? But that's a narrative. And, um, <clears throat> Um, so there is some uh, theory behind, uh, I mean, if, if, if it happens, okay, the, the rumor spreads between people, it will impact economic activity. That's very interesting. And he believes in a theory that attention getting narratives, storytelling, right, rumors uh, be between people, uh, storytelling and spreading like a virus spreading. Uh, drives those decisions and creates economic activities. That's what he believes. And he wrote a book on narrative economics. Very kind of interesting. So, um, now,今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年今年
Okay? Because global internet traffic increased by 48% in 2020 as office workers were forced to do their jobs from home, e-commerce boomed and millions turned to video streaming services as Netflix and online gaming. So you need more um, data storage, more cloud system. Okay? In 2021, growth in uh, global internet traffic returned to more normal level uh, of 23%. Uh, so it was a surge year 2020. It's a crazy year of this data center utilizing uh, data centers and the cloud system. Uh, when you say cloud system, you don't see any hardware, but that company has to have hardware somewhere. You know that, right? So they're talking about the unit of a megawatt. The data center is using a lot of electricity. What kind of a megawatt capacity they're talking about? And the extra online activity has translated into strong demand for data storage. In the U.S., leasing in multi-tenant data centers in 2020 was more than three times higher than the year 2019 by megawatts. And global demand for data storage should remain strong as more of a world's consumer and corporate data moves to cloud storage. Cloud storage. Even our company is now is going to use Google Drive for all the documentation storage for the company. Uh, likewise, many consumers, even, even, even high school kids, they use all cloud. They don't use uh, C drive in the computer anymore. Huh? Uh, everything is uh, up on the air, up on the cloud. So more and more, uh, big companies, medium-sized companies, uh, private server companies, they need the data centers and they need the buildings. So that's what is also real estate investors looking into this. Investor duty to come the office building in the total peso, as office building or paraso, data center building or santa. But you don't even boo boo ga sengyotta. Because of course, the big guy, you can see black stone is there. Uh, Black Rock, uh, to, to company, SNL company, Blackstone, I think, uh, the data center, the first company, the cloud, streaming, video streaming. <coughs> uh, data center, uh, <clears throat> okay, finally, we want to talk about the corona and uh, that's it. Okay, what's happening with the corona? Uh, Omicron. US is seven day corona case average up to 7,000. Very mute, please. Okay. And uh, well, as I read today's newspaper in the morning, uh, like seven, seven thirty thousand uh, went over uh, seven hundred thousand already. Okay. So this is the first time. It's a record. Uh, of course, the Johns Hopkins uh, University is collecting all the nationwide data. You know that, right? So they uh, <clears throat> reported uh, all these uh, statistics. And um, <clears throat> so, but the, the number of reported by uh, state health departments, so all the state health departments send the data to Johns Hopkins and uh, they, they collect all these things. But this is actually reflect a fraction of true numbers. Uh -huh. Uh, more than 700,000 uh, positives is not a true number, which means much, much more due to the part the Omicron rapid spread and difficulty uh, many Americans have uh, getting tested. Okay, It's hard to do test first, but also uh, some people didn't say I'm positive. 
uh, right? So also they already know that. And uh, there is a growing evidence suggesting Omicron is milder than the other coronavirus variants that uh, has fueled the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, driving belief that it will prove less lethal. But that means it's mild, the symptom is milder. So also death rate is not that great, not that high. But that's also looks like true, okay? <clears throat> So seven day average of new, newly reported US has reached the, six, the death rate, it's 1600. Uh, John Sampkins data shows up from level closer to 1250 uh, last week. So last week, uh, because of Omicron death was 1250, 250, but this week, uh, 1600, it's a little bit up. But what about New York City? New York City, interesting enough, but there are signs the pace of case surge may at least be easing. New York City, now it hit the top and then it's going down. This is a good news. And the wave in cases is outing significant pressure on house, hospitals in the state. But still, the, the hospital uh, will be stressed. Uh, because of this number of cases. According to Johns Hopkins, and today's uh, Korea Daily, according to uh, Johns Hopkins, the seven day average cases in New York are 57,865, while it was 132,000 a week earlier. Aha, uh -huh. so New York now is reducing, okay, from a week ago which is down 56.2%. On 11th, which is yesterday, coronavirus transmission rate is 18.6%, while it was 30 to 35% a week ago. All right, finally, New York got new, new, uh, good news, uh, but we will see more, more uh, uh, news, uh, positive news uh, a little later. Uh, seven day average, moving average, uh, 지금, 지금, 이제, 보고하는데요. 이게 벌써 70만이 넘었다. 그래도 오늘 아침 뉴스가 73만인가, 75만인가 넘었어요. 지금 엄청나게 지금 퍼지고 있는데, 아, 지금 뭐, 어, 심텀이 약하니까, 뭐 죽는 레이트도 굉장히 약할 거다. 이렇게 대부분이 다 지금 알고 있고, 어, 그, 그러나 이제 레이스는 올라가고 있죠. 어, 지금 그 존스 합킨스 대학이 모든 전국에서 데이터를 다 합치고 있는데 어 라스트 위기에 1250명이 죽었고 어, 금주에는 1600명이 죽었다. 그런데 뉴욕은 지금 다행인 게어 지금 꼭 꼭지점을 넘어섰다. 정점을 넘어섰다라고 지금 보는 거죠. 어 그래서 지금 다행이다라는 뉴스가 지금 나오고 있어요. 왜냐하면 은 지금 뉴욕에 요거 전번 주에는 14만 2천 명이었는데 어, 이번 주에는 5만 7천 명으로 떨어졌어요. 그래서 56.2%가 떨어졌고 일주 전에는 트랜스미션 웨이시 30% 내지 35%였는데 지금 이번 주에는 18.6%다. 그러니까 지금 뉴욕은 어, 오히려 지금 안정이 되어 있고 다운 모드로 가고 있다. Um, this, is, this is a okay. Um, okay, quickly. Mother shows Omicron may have picked in US. Aha, this is a very uh, encouraging news. Uh, today's record. Okay, mother shows Omicron may have picked in US. Aha, uh, that's good news. And um, they simulate uh, this kind of a situation, the, each university. Uh, <clears throat> And uh, according to their simulation, okay, the modeling, the COVID-19 infection picked the uh, January 6th. Aha, already passed. According to this university um, the research team, and we picked at 6.2 million infections, said Professor uh, Makhdad. Uh, uh, that is close to estimate by University of Texas. So other university also they uh, estimate is pretty much same thing. And uh, looks like uh, there is a COVID-19 modeling consortium. 
So each university, they team up and make consortium to make this kind of statistics, uh, report the statistics and the uh, try to um, model the, the case, this case, and they predict future. As we predict the uh, housing market uh, this year, and um, so they saying uh, the peak somewhere between January 9th and 13th. So maybe according to their model today, this week is a peak, hopefully from next week going down. And um, okay, this is interesting. This group, the mock that uh, group estimated by July 3rd, at least 57% of Americans had COVID-19, at least once. Wow, can you believe this? Can you believe this? 57% of Americans had COVID-19 at least once. They estimated. The model resumes for uh, everyone reported a case of COVID-19. There are five actual cases. Why 57% of American got the positive at least once? They saying they assume uh, five actual cases, whether they know or not, okay, five actual cases, only one report. <laughs> so uh, that's why uh, they saying. But uh, hospitalization lag infections by about two weeks. Okay, so. Uh, right now, hosp hospital is uh, really crazy. Okay, a lot of trouble right now. Because it's lagging two weeks. Okay, and uh, it, it, the big wave hit the hospital after two weeks. I mean, it's, it is lagging. And um, <clears throat> so, but, but uh, the, the uh, the comparing with the Delta, uh, Amid, uh, much less, uh, <clears throat> much less hospitalization and much less death. Okay, that's what they're saying. Uh, 지금 그 uh, 그 뉴스는 uh, 지금 그각 대학에서 마델링을 많이 하는데요. 이게 어떻게 될 것인가를 uh, 그런데 지금 uh, 이번 주가 uh, 거의 피크라고 하는. 마델이 마델이 지금 몇개 대학 팀에서 나왔고 이 마델링 하는 그 컨소시엄이 있는데 거기서는 지금 1월 9일이나 13일 정도가 피크일 거다. 오케이. 그 다음부터는 이제 줄어든다. 이렇게 되는데 하나 놀라운 사실은 이 마드 마드 그룹에서 에스티메이션 한게 1월 3일부로 한 57%의 아메리칸이 다 파스티브 한 번은 걸렸다라고 에스티메이션을 한 거예요. 어떤 어수을 했냐 하면은 리포트 하나가 나오면 다섯 명 중에서 다섯 명이 걸렸는데 실제로 리포트 하는 사람은 한 사람이다. 가정을 하고서 이제 이런 에스티메이션을 했다. 57%. 왜냐하면 걸렸어도 얘기 안 하는 사람도 있고 또 걸린 줄 모르고 지나간 사람도 있고. 오케이. 그래서 very interesting. 그러니까 뭐반 이상이 다 걸렸다. 이렇게 보시면 될것 같아요. 이 대학의 estimation으로 봤을 때 그러나 오미크론은 이제 hospitalization 병원 가는 레이트하고 죽는 레이트 델타보다 훨씬 떨어진다. 그래서 병원 가는 레이트 0.7%밖에 안 되고요. 그다음에 음, 아 그때 그 델타의 경우는 3.3%였대요. 병원 가는 레이트. 근데 이 오미크론은 0.7%다. 그렇게 어, 심터은 굉장히 말더라. 자, 그렇게 지금 어, 레코드지에서 아주 인카리징한 뉴스를 보고해 줬고요. 그다음에 이 뉴스는 this is a power ready to raise rate. Uh, everybody knows that, but sees supply was easing. Um, now they said uh, the power said a severe threat. Okay, not uh, transitory, not temporary anymore. The severe threat, that's what uh, uh, Powell said. To a full economy recovery and said Tuesday, the uh, central bank was preparing to raise interest rate because the economy no longer needed emergency support. That's good, that's good. 
And uh, Power said he was optimistic that supply chain bottlenecks would ease this year to help bring down inflation as the Fed takes its foot off the gas pedal. But he told the lawmakers at his Senate confirmation hearing that if inflation stays elevated, keep going up, then Fed ready to step on brakes. Okay. If we have raised interest rate more over time, we will decide. And, um, but so far, uh, there's nothing to push back against the expectation that um, have formed in the interest rate of futures markets over the past week, and that the central bank would begin a cycle of rate increase in March. Okay, so it's, it's still as of today, it's pre-formed that Fed will increase interest rate in March. That's what they're saying, basically. Uh, 지금 그 파웰은 이제 인플레이션이 이제 직접 시비어 트레스로 표현을 했고요. 트렌지도 아니고 템포러리도 아니다. 이렇게 이제 했고 어, 그리고 지금 현재까지는 3월 달 인트레스 레이스를 올리는데 다른 어떤 변수나 이런 거는 안 보인다. 지금 그런 얘기를 지금 어, 해서 어, 계속 어, 진행하고 있다. Other tech, um, this week, uh, Samsung said uh, they will really bet uh, 2022 will finally be the year of folding phones. I don't know how many uh, of you has a folding phones. I know one, Mr. Choi, um, Chia Nyang Nim, got the Samsung, the, um, the newest of fold phone, but Samsung uh, saying, this year is a really year of the uh, folding phones. Samsung has 84% of the foldable market and the foldable smartphone represented 8.6 million of last year's total smartphone shipment around 1.4 billion. Okay, so maybe uh, you can watch out uh, these foldable phones in the market. Okay, uh, that's it for today.